today's topic is caffeine. All right, so first off, I just want to say, a lot of people in the morning, or even during the day, grab that cup of coffee because they're burned out, because they're tired, because they need something that gets them going. Oh, I need my caffeine, I need my caffeine. So they have to have their caffeine. So besides having an addiction to it, I just want to say that this is not normal. To need a cup of coffee to feel good, to have your energy, is not normal. So you may want to look at deeper places inside yourself, like what's really going on in your body that you are needing to take something, ingest something, that gives you the energy to make it through the day or wake up in the morning. You know, our world, obviously, our food, our, uh, our everything, all the pollutants, everything is messing up and affecting our physical body. So that's also something to just be aware of and, you know, look at it. Okay, so the caffeine addiction, you know, it's like a, you do get addicted to it. You have headaches when you stop drinking it and, you know, so there is a, there is a property of addiction that begins to happen. Your body starts to crave it. You need to be, depend on it. That too is not normal. So any addiction is not normal. Alright, so with caffeine, I'm just going to look at different energy fields, look at different people that drink caffeine. So just, just to check in. So people that are here, do, so I know that, does everyone here drink caffeine? <laughs> okay, alrighty then. Uh huh, alright. I quit it once and I felt very different. Mm -hmm. For about six months I didn't have any caffeine. Did it feel better? I was very calm and peaceful. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. right. I used to take caffeine when I get migraines because it helped with the migraines. Ah, uh -huh. okay, right. Okay, so, do, so there's imbalances that are happening too, obviously. Okay, so I'm just going to be tracking everybody's energy field, but I also you know, want to give a little information too. The whole addiction thing, and also caffeine addiction. It's, it's, you know, there's a few components that are true for everyone. So when you think about having your cup of coffee, okay, there's a whole like little, it's almost like a little ceremony that people go through, right? Mm -hmm. you, sometimes, sometimes people wake up with coffee brewing in the morning, it, when you wake up to the smell of coffee and it smells good, and you have a little ritual. Some people go have their coffee, sit outside, have a cigarette, but it's, you know, it's almost like there's some kind of ceremony that also happens with the, the cup of coffee. And there's also something about what's happening in our world now where we don't really have a lot of ceremony like we did in the, in the past. And, and also, but the thing is, is the ceremony stuff is also in the old paradigm, see? So we're moving out of that. So getting, getting oneself where we can be ourselves without needing some kind of ceremony or something then you know that's that's actually the direction you want to move in. And with the the whole coffee thing in the morning or afternoon or whenever you do it, when you think about it, people are going to different coffee shops. So it's a social thing for people. Many people that's where they're connecting with others. And and then it's also so for some people too, it's almost like a meditation. You know what I mean? It's not that quiet time where they can especially in the morning. The morning is the quiet time. You know, sometimes people when they want their coffee, don't talk to them until they have their coffee. And, you know, they're doing their little thing on their computer. So it's like their little rituals that they do. The difficulty is that when we become dependent on it and have an addiction to it. So as we start looking at where did this all come from? You know, where did this need for something where we, you know, need to have something to ingest to feel good or to feel... Um, you know, more awake or more aware, and where does this all come from? That's always my question. What, what's, the, what's the cause of this? Where is this really, what's going on? Where is this really coming from? So, as I'm looking at the energy of people, in fact, you know what, let's call people in now, because I just want to get a sense of many different people. So, in our clearings, we call people in. So, what you can do right now is if you've got people that you know that are have that addiction, just call them in. Good. Just bring more people in so that they're in the room with us. And then I can start really getting a sense of, you know, some of the, the components that are same, that, you know, the same kinds of frequencies that people have.
Good, good, good. Bringing more people in. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So it's also a time where people connect with themselves. I can see that too. You know, it's where they're having their coffee and they may be in nature or sitting outside or um, or even in the house, doesn't matter, sometimes on the computers, internet, searching, whatever, whatever, emails, things of that nature. So you're also in a state of distraction while also enjoying your coffee. So it all has to do with distraction, uh, disconnect, and a way to feel connected. Okay, so yes, as I'm looking at the energy, watching what happens inside the physical body, I'm watching and seeing the energy of disconnect, meaning where you're not fully present with your own self, where you're not fully inside your physical body all the way, but also you're disconnected from a lot of emotions and feelings that have to do with um, feeling a void. Like I see a lot of void energy in people's bodies. Mm -hmm. Actually, I'll just share a little bit with what I'm seeing. Because whatever we're focusing on, I'm just going to remind you, whatever we focus on, that's what presents. It doesn't mean other things won't present, but what I'm doing right now is I'm asking these deeper questions. And as that happens, then that energy presents and it shows me, it gives me visuals, it gives me a sense of. So, as I'm tracking the energy and watching, and everybody that's been called in and everybody present, I'm actually literally seeing like, like, um, like a dark, kind of darkness inside. Now keep in mind, darkness doesn't mean evil or bad. It means, in this instance, it means disconnection. No awareness, no consciousness, no light in certain components, areas of the emotional body. So what I'm looking at is the emotional body right now. As I'm tracking that, I'm watching to see everyone has the same kind of energy in their energy field. And that emotional energy, when I penetrate inside of people's energy field, just to get a sense of what are people avoiding? What are people not really feeling into? What are they not aware of? Where's the disconnect? Okay, so as I start going in, into people's energy field, just watching what's happening, tracking that. Mm -hmm. Okay, wow, 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 wow. Alrighty. Okay. So this is interesting. There's despair in people's bodies. There's deep despair. Okay, and I'm going to say if I'm going to share a few things, but I want to talk about despair for a moment. Despair happens when we feel separate, when we feel alone, when we feel unloved. And each of those pieces I just mentioned all have their own feeling, their own energy frequency to them as well. But despair happens when we feel extreme sense of separation, when we feel unloved, unwanted, unseen, unappreciated, unacknowledged. The feelings where we have interpreted something in our lives that has caused us to believe that we're not wanted, that we're not loved, we're not lovable. Okay? So let me back up a little bit with that. In childhood, in infancy, I know this is kind of, it may sound kind of like, whoa, okay, but it's true, it's for real. You take a baby, in the, if the baby's in the womb, the baby's feeling its mother's energy, it's feeling its father's energy, it's feeling the frequencies that your mom holds inside, as well as her reactions to feel it, to people, to whatever she's living. You're taking that in, you have no concept that that's your mother. All you're knowing is this is what you're sensing, you're feeling. The frequency is in your energy field. You're drinking in that frequency. So, whatever that is, you're already, in some ways, on guard for what's going on. What does this mean? Not that you're thinking it in your mind, but you are experiencing reaction to the frequency. And. A lot of times moms, if they're young moms, doesn't matter, but there are times that almost all moms wonder, oh, am I going to be a good mother? Can I do this pregnancy? You know, can I? some people don't want the child. Some people don't love the child. The baby's feeling all of that. And then let's just take it forward. If you have a difficult birth, all of that as well contributes to the trauma that you're living with. It can still be in your energy field. You come into the world. You're, since everything is about you, since we can only perceive ourselves and only feel what we feel, 
if we get hurt, like if, you know, if, like if mother's angry and she's changing the diaper, or mother's angry or upset about something and she's burping the baby, all of this energy is being fed into the baby and the baby's interpreting that as there's something about the baby that must be wrong. Okay, so when that keeps growing, so every time you have a reaction, your diaper doesn't get changed, you're feeling diaper rash, or you're hungry and you're not being fed, you're interpreting all of these things as there's something wrong with you. And then as you continue to grow and, you know, get in trouble for touching things or being curious or, you know, like babies are they're putting everything in their mouth and the mother freaks out, the baby feels the frequency of that freak out. And the only, remember, the only thing the baby can realize is it's about me. I'm doing it. There's something wrong with me. And then little things happen. Maybe another child's born or maybe there's something that occurs where... Uh, you feel unloved, or, you know, I mean, how many people have this thought, well, you know, I must be adopted, okay, or this isn't my real family. Almost everybody has that thought at some point in their life, okay? So, it, all these frequencies and imprints and conclusions that we're drawing start to feed into the unworthiness, the feeling that we're not worthy, we're not loved, our mother doesn't love us. Has anybody sat in their room and felt sorry for themselves, thinking no one loved them. Has anybody done that? At least once. <laughs> okay? How about years? Alright? So, somehow, there's a disconnect. Okay? So when these feelings are growing inside of us, when these beliefs are being created, because the frequency is hitting us, we're interpreting it, we're believing it's us, we begin to shut down and move away from the painful feelings. See, if we stayed with the feeling, like most, what happens is, okay, if let's just use a child that feels like their mother doesn't like, because they got in trouble. Mom got mad, they got in trouble, now they're pouting and like, Mom, nobody loves me, nobody loves me. They go to their room, they feel, feel sorry for themselves. But what they're feeling is just that sensation of, Mom doesn't love me. I must be something, be something wrong with me. There's something wrong with me. I must be bad. That's still a frequency that people aren't really dropping into. Well, what's the feeling underneath all that? So if we had the teachings and the know-how to unravel emotional energy, life would be completely different. We wouldn't have these disconnects and feeling of despair in the physical body that I'm looking at inside of everyone because we would bring consciousness to these dark places, we would have known them by feeling them fully and completely and unraveling them and they would be gone. And then there would be a feeling of wholeness and completeness and the thought of even being addicted to anything wouldn't even be entertained. Why? You're content with yourself. Okay, so when I talk about despair, despair gets created with all these other sensations and feelings and it also goes back into past life, so you've carried forth a lot of the disconnect anyway. But you're just reinforcing everything in this particular lifetime. So the feeling of despair wants, is something to be avoided. Who wants to feel despair? Okay, another component is, who wants to face themselves? I mean, nobody. Okay, the moment we go, okay, you're going to look inside. What? I don't think so. People are out the door, okay? So people have a tendency not to want to look at themselves, not to want to face what, what they feel inside. I'm just going to have a little reminder about how many times when you look in the mirror, how long can you sustain looking at yourself in the mirror and notice what feelings start to come up or notice a discomfort. What's up with that? Okay, so if you were full of light and you loved yourself, there'd be no issue. Okay, so all the other components too start to feed into this disconnect, our cultural beliefs around sexuality, our cultural beliefs around religions and being born in sin, all of these things contribute to your disconnect. Okay? So, no consciousness, no awareness in these places. These are dark places inside. So as I'm tracking everybody's energy field here and the people you've called in, it's almost like, if I were to describe it, it goes into your, it has a quality of being like in the upper, like this whole part of the upper body. Like the torso, it's more in the torso, some of it does go down into the legs. 
but it isn't just located in the energy centers and the chakras, it's just like this big blob of energy that kind of goes into the whole upper body. And this dark, kind of a dark gray, blackish kind of color, because there's no consciousness there, there's no light there. You haven't brought awareness into these aspects of self. You haven't gone deeper into the feeling of, oh, mom doesn't want me, mom doesn't love me. And then, you know, you stay with the feeling of feeling sorry for yourself rather than really dropping in to what that's really feeling like, which also comes from past incarnations. So there's an avoidance of really deep-seated emotional pain that's happening inside everyone's physical body that's coming from the past. It didn't completely start here. You brought it forth, and all the experiences of this lifetime, even in the womb, are just bringing more of the same energy so you can unravel it, so you can face it, so you can know it. But we don't have that awareness, so of course we all avoid it. Okay, so here comes wonderful caffeine. Doesn't caffeine... Okay, I'm sorry. Doesn't caffeine have some kind of euphoric experience? Okay, I'm just going to share something that's kind of personal. Back in 2004 when I was doing cleanses, because I had uh, uh, mercury poisoning, that kind of stuff, and some of the techniques while I was working with a naturopath was to do coffee enemas. Mm -hmm. Okay, see, I don't drink coffee. So I would do an enema, and I'm not joking, you guys, for hours I'd be in this euphoric state. It was intense. <laughs> it was incredible. It's like really cool. <coughs> and, you know, it was still a caffeine high. It wasn't normal. So that's a you know, that's different than ingesting it, but there's still something about it does give a little bit of a euphoric experience. It makes you feel bitter, makes you feel more connected, you know what I mean? So, but it's not true, it's not real and it's temporary. Okay, but we can also look at the positive aspect of it as oh, it gives you something that you can know that oh this is what it feels like to feel connected. This is what it feels like. This is the flavor of how it feels to have that connection. To have the heart open. That's what it was. It was like a heart opening experience. Mm -hmm. And then that heart opening experience was like, yeah, the euphoric, euphoria experience. So, as I'm just looking at the energy field inside people's bodies, of course there's always entities that are contributing and just for each individual, people live with a feeling of hopelessness and despair and grief and sadness that lives inside of this emotional energy field that I'm tracking inside of everyone. That needs to be cleaned up. That needs to be unraveled and resolved. Okay? And it's going to show up not just in your caffeine addiction things, but it's going to show up in different experiences, intimate experiences, experiences where you feel betrayed or where you feel like something's gone awry or you feel judged or you feel shamed or whatever. That energy field inside of people at some point, either in this incarnation or another, good news is you got eternity, so, you know, you got forever. Unless you really turn really evil, then you might be annihilated, so, you know, that may or may not happen, but I don't see anybody here going into that darkness. So, you do have a long time. It doesn't really matter. And, why not deal with it? Why not have joy and experience and, and be liberated from addictions? Why not? You really, when, you're, when you're liberated from addictions, you're really more present. You're more capable and able to experience life just as it is, and it gets exquisite. That's what's cool. Mm -hmm. Not just when you're drinking the caffeine, it becomes exquisite like a lot all the time, you know? I mean, I love being here. It's like the most, it's such an experience. It's so incredible. And I'm not denying that, yes, I've had my moments of I'm out of here, okay? As we all have. So, but I'm also knowing it's not about the world. It's not the world. It's all about me, okay? So, addictions are an, a deep unraveling. The caffeine thing is a deep unraveling. As I'm looking at the energy field, the frequency, I'm watching it as it goes into the body, and it does. It goes into the cells, it goes into your entire physical body, and it, for, for a while it, it kind of gives you like some kind of peace or some kind of clarity or some, something that is different than when you're not having caffeine in your physical body. 
So what it's also doing, it's a crutch to be able to be in the world without facing what's inside. And facing what's inside is something that's going to be vitally important. Okay, so with the caffeine thing, the thought of that being taken away, I'm just going to say, okay, you guys going to, okay, so now you're going to give up caffeine. Notice what that feels like. The thought of just, okay, no more, that's it. See what that feels like in your body. Because it hits the social concept of it. Okay? It hits the ceremony, the, um, you know, the, the rituals, and your peaceful time, or whatever that is. And people, you know, they need that. At least they think they need it. Of course, they're not free of it, so they don't know that they don't need it. And the body is attached to it. Well, uh -huh. And you have lots of entities inside that are also very attached to it, like seriously attached to it. So in the clearing, what we want to do is to truly start unraveling these deeper, deeper places where you feel unloved. I mean, bottom, bottom, baseline is there's a sense of feeling unloved, and in that feeling unloved, there's a separation. The separation is the core of everything. Separation from the all that is, is the absolute core of every issue you have. Okay? So, those are just words that don't mean anything because you don't have a sense of that connection anyway, other than perhaps in meditations or, you know, some people have done a lot of work or a lot of looking within do have a sense of that connection, but most people do not. These are just empty words. Oh, yeah, 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 right, yeah, I know it's a separation from oneness, yeah, I get that. Do you know it inside? Most likely not. Okay, so in the clearing we're just going to start unraveling some of these deeper unconscious places, as well as releasing other beings inside. We'll be looking at all the different components. This isn't so much like a dark force thing, but there can be those kind of interferences. Mm. Yeah, there can be that with, the, uh, with some of the emotional despair stuff. So, when you think about the thought of or the feelings of the emotions that you're avoiding, notice what that feels like. Okay, so even when I say, okay, let's go ahead and look at some of these feelings that you don't want to look at. The feeling of despair, the feeling of feeling unloved, the feeling of feeling unwanted. When I say that, how does that feel? Do you go, oh yeah, I want to feel that right now. Yes, I'm excited about that one. Bring it on. Are you going, uh, I don't think so. Can you feel some resistance inside? <laughs> does it feel like a little resistance? Or does it feel like big resistance? Does it also have, okay, now, so feel into this, okay? And just let yourself be with that resistance. Does it also have a quality of like, perhaps at first it might feel like fear? Does it feel scary? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when you let, let yourself just feel that feeling of fear, just be with that just for a moment. Just let that resistance be there. Let that feeling of fear be there. And as you allow that, notice that if you, if you just keep staying with it, there can even be where you start to feel like, almost like a feeling of terror. Okay? So this is what's in your body. This is in the emotional body that is within your physical body. It's your emotions that are still there. If these aren't ever cleared, how are you ever going to stop being addicted to anything? If this is always inside of you, you're always going to be finding some reason to avoid yourself. So this feeling of terror, this feeling of fear, you have no idea where it's coming from. Your mind is never going to figure it out. Like right now, you might be trying to understand, where is this coming from? Where am I, why am I feeling this? How can I get rid of it? What can I do to unravel it? How can I be gone with it, be done with it? How can I avoid it? How can we just get it out of here without me having to face it? You don't want it, you know, everything in you is saying, I don't want this. I want to be done with this. And yet, when I say, alrighty then, let's go in and feel it. And what's the first thing that happens? No friggin' way. Okay, you'd rather, you'd rather go wash dishes, you'd rather go, you know, do something that you hate doing. 
then face this feeling inside, okay? It's terrifying. Because what it means is you have to face what's inside, and what's inside is buried, buried, buried deep. And what's inside is, the, like I said a moment ago, it is the initial core separation from the all that is. And people are still unraveling that. We might get pieces here and there through our clearings, but it's a, this, is like, this is the core, the foundation of all disturbances, all places where we feel disconnected, all feelings of feeling unwanted, all of our issues are coming from that. That's a huge one. So it's a big undertaking, it's a big unraveling. And, you got something better to do? <laughs> you guys, I can say this because I have done so much inner work, man. It's like, okay, alrighty then. So, and I can tell you straight up, it's not fun. It's intense, okay? And yet, if you don't do it, it doesn't go away. That's the point. It's like this, I used to tell people, it's like having a toothache, you know, a major, major toothache. So you can go in and get the tooth pulled, and that's excruciating, excruciating, but it's only for a little bit, you know, 15, 10 minutes, it's over. As opposed to, well, let's just maintain that toothache for the rest of your life. Okay? Serious, that's, that's what I'm talking about here. All right, so part of this means unraveling some of the emotional energy. I'm going to be moving stuff, but at the same time, I'm actually going to be encouraging you to drop in. Okay? And in that dropping in, there's a letting go that needs to happen in order to clear these frequencies. Okay? When we start dropping in, that into places that it feels really uncomfortable, or it feels very painful, or it becomes emotionally painful, it, 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 can be, it can feel as though your heart is literally breaking, Not, I'm telling you straight up, breaking. It can feel like it's shattering. It can feel like you can't bear it. <clears throat> okay, seriously. It can hit that place where it feels like you just, you're going to die, you're not going to make, you just can't do it. It's too intense. Okay? So the key is, go as deep and as far as you can. Let go as fully and as deeply as you can. And each time that you do, more little chunks will be released. More energy will be released. More frequencies will be released and it gets easier, and it's like more lightning happens. Lightning, lightning meaning lighter inside. Lighter in the emotional frequency of the emotional body begins to occur. Okay? So, <clears throat> despair is like in that whole frequency. So we're going to be doing a few things, but like I said, this is probably going to be the first time as far as a clearing goes where I'm going to literally encourage and, and support and actually assist you to drop in to go deeper. Okay? So, right now, you're going to give yourself permission. Okay? And giving yourself permission means I'm saying yes to facing myself, I'm saying yes to feeling whatever presents, I'm saying yes to letting go of whatever I'm holding on to. I, you know, it, this also means to know thyself. This is what it means. This is the frequency. This is the, the teachings on the know thyself. Okay? To know thyself means you're going to know yourself by facing what's inside. Okay. So who would have ever thought the caffeine would bring us to this place, this point? Okay? Alright, cool.